Oh, hey kids. How's everybody out there in YouTube land today, huh? Well, got a dilemma. Got a bit of a dilemma today. Something I'm not sure exactly how to fix. And I hate, hate being in a situation where I have something that I don't know how to fix. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily. Let's go feed. So let me um, set up here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, got my phone set up so we can incubate some eggs. Let me show you what's going on. Once again, once again, I have a very large percentage of eggs that are not are not fertile. That's an unfertile egg. That one looks like an unfertile egg to me. That's a fertile egg. Can you see the difference? Can you see that? Let me shut this light off for a minute. There. Can you see that? You see the veining in it? You can actually see the little baby duck developing in there. You can see all of the, uh, the veins that will eventually form into and become a duck. He's got a little air pocket here on the side. And as we turn them, the dense part of the of the duck is blocking the light. As we turn them around, bring it around to the light side. There you can see him beautifully right there. So that's a nice fertile egg. Okay. So, okay. So what I did is I incubated 40 eggs. So that's what I've got in my incubator right now is 40 eggs. And once again, about 15 of them are not fertile. So why? Why am I getting such a large or poor infertility rate? Um, I have, these all are Rowan eggs. I have two drakes in with um, five hens. Five hens and two drakes. That's a huge ratio. I mean, usually one drake to seven, eight, nine, ten hens would be an acceptable ratio. And you should still have a good fertility rate. <clears throat> so I have to question what's going on. What am I doing wrong in my systems? Am I, um, am I not collecting the eggs in a timely fashion? Uh, are, they, are they outside for too long getting cold? Um, when I get ready to load the brooder, I collect eggs over a few days so I can fill the brooder. Well. I only have five Rowans laying, so I get five or six eggs a day. This thing will hold 40 eggs, so it takes me six to seven days to get enough eggs to fill up a brooder. So by holding those eggs six or seven days, am I, am I holding them too long? Am I holding them in too cool of an environment? I keep them right here in my room in, well, I'll show you. Keep them right up there in that wire basket in my room. So it stays up high, which should stay warmer. Um, and, you know, it's right here in the room where, it, you know, we, we keep it at 68, 68 to 72 degrees in here pretty much all the time. 
<clears throat> so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. There's something in, uh, I'm either keeping them, I'm storing them in too cold a temperature, I'm storing them too long, or I don't have good fertility with my drakes breeding my hens, or I'm leaving them outside after they're laid, they're outside too long being exposed to too much cold. <clears throat> One of those four things I think is the right answer, but you know, for you guys out there, maybe I'm more experienced than I do with this, what you're thinking. Um, I've incubated and hatched a lot before, but I'm a little dismayed why my fertility rate is so low. Now it could be I need to get more hens in there and, and have more eggs um, so that I can collect all 40 eggs in say two or three days and not over a week. Um, could be I need to increase my drake percentage? I don't think so. That doesn't seem like the problem to me. Maybe I need to store them somewhat a little bit warmer here in the house. Could be a possibility. Uh, but I think my number one, I think my number one problem is, is it's still cold outside. Um, it's, get, it's been getting down to almost freezing at night here still a few times. And so maybe when they lay the eggs and the eggs sit outside and get cold, uh, maybe they're just getting too cold and that's killing off any uh, sperm that could have been inside the egg and so it didn't uh, fertilize the egg and start growing. That to me I think is, is probably my biggest issue, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe if some of you guys out there could uh, could lend me your expertise and, and give me a better idea. So, Anyhow, I just want to do a little short video here letting you guys know I'm trying to work out this problem. This is a typical kind of thing that we have here on the homestead is, um, you know, working out these little tiny bugs and yeah, I still hatch 25 ducklings, that's great, 24 ducklings, that's great, you know, but I could have had 40, you know, and, and when you're trying to do this to make a buck, that makes a big difference, that really makes a big difference. Um, you know, at 25 of them, at, at five bucks a piece, I'm making $125, 40 of them at five bucks a piece would have been 200 bucks. $200 a week's not bad. Not bad for a little bit of side income. And um, so it's something to think about. I am considering buying some more incubators. Um, right now I'm only collecting eggs for one week out of the month and that's what I'm incubating. If I had a second incubator, I could be doing that uh, two weeks out of the month. <clears throat> Three and four if I just keep adding incubators. So, um, but then, you know, I have, to I have to augment that by seasonality. Um, how long will people be buying baby ducks? Usually that's something people do in the spring, summer, you know, um, not so much in the fall and certainly not in the winter time. So it's a short season, like a garden season, it's a short season. And uh, so I have to weigh my options in that regard. Uh, I still think I may get a second incubator this year, um, just so I can be doing at least two batches a month uh, for extra income. But you know, if by hatching uh, 25 of them, 125 bucks, uh, my first batch uh, recovered more than half the cost of my incubator. This batch that's in there right now will put me on the plus side financially on my infrastructure investment to get into an egg hatching business, uh, you know, a hatchery business. So, um, you know, that's a pretty good ROI uh, for those of you not in the securities industry, return on investment. Uh, it's a pretty good ROI after such a small investment and so quickly, so quickly. You know, I, I hatched out that first batch, you know, I, I bought the incubator. Uh, 30 days later, the first batch hatched and a week, within a week, all of them sold. That's a pretty good turn on your dollar. So if I can do that two, three, four times a month, you know, think about it. If I can get my fertility up to where I'm hatching 40 every week, that's 200 bucks a week. That's $800 a month. Kids, that's not, that's nothing to sneeze at. $800 a month is a mortgage payment. Think about it, $800 a month is a mortgage payment. 
So if you're sitting there thinking you can't afford to buy a piece of land, I've got nine ducks out there that cost me $10 a month to feed. $10 a month for a bag of feed. They go through about a bag of feed a month. I got 10 ducks out there. That's my cost. Um, you know, I, I bought some scrap fencing and put together a little pen for them and built them a little plywood house. I don't have $200 invested in infrastructure that will last 20 years. $10 a month to feed them, a couple hundred bucks for a good incubator, and now I'm in a situation where I can, one incubator, I'm talking about $200 a month. I can easily go to four incubators with that, not having to add any more ducks, and have $800 a month coming in. That's a, that's buying a farm, you know? $800 a month, that'd, that, that'd pay a $150,000 mortgage. Think about that. That would pay for a really nice new pickup truck. Think about that. Just from a little side hustle, raising some ducks. So, something to consider. Okay, some things coming up in the future. I've got another video I'm working on, uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to go about doing that, but I'll uh, give you a little sneak preview. Eggs, perfect example. Chickens are known as the gateway drug to homesteading. They're the thing that uh, people start with. And what, what happens when you have chickens, okay? You, you become the crazy chicken person, right? You have a little flock, you know, you buy 10 or 12 to start out with, eight, whatever. And, you know, you go in a tractor supply to buy feed. Oh my gosh, they have babies, so you buy some more. And next time you go in there, oh my gosh, they got babies, so you get some more. Next thing you know, you have 50 chickens at home. Now, you and your family only eat, you know, two, four, six, eight, whatever eggs a day. And now you're getting 30 and 40 eggs a day. Well, 15 eggs a day. The most common problem with all homesteaders, the one thing that all of them deal with is what do you do with all them eggs? How do you not waste a, a good resource like that? And so I'm gonna go into detail on some of the ways you can use those eggs to your advantage and really the impact that those eggs have on your homestead. So that's gonna be in an upcoming video. Right now I'm just interested in my, my fertility here and how I'm gonna deal with that. Because that, that has me a little perplexed right now. I'm a little frustrated. I'm, I'm walking away from about $75 a month or $75 a batch. So I got to work out those details. Anyhow, we'll have more for you in the near future, kids. Be good, be careful, take good care of one another. Thanks for watching. Give us a big thumbs up. Be sure to like, be sure to share, and be sure to subscribe. We'll have more for you later, kids. Thanks. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all shore and make them happy. Hug them, mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in their mouth. I'd be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rear back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.